So growing up, um, I'm from Catalina Island, and my dad's side of the family is from over there, and my mom's side's from uh, Long Beach area. Uh, my parents split up when I was about three years old, and my mom took me with her, and she's uh, always, since a uh, very young age, has had addiction issues, and so um, living with her was that kind of lifestyle of living in hotels, cars. Um, in about sixth grade, my uh, grandparents and my dad found out that we were living in my mom's car in Portland, Oregon, and so um, my grandparents uh, sent a plane ticket for me, and uh, so about sixth grade to adulthood, I lived on the island and was uh, doing really well, you know, as far as uh, spiritually and, and in school and all that. And, you know, I had some stability, uh, but my dad ended up getting bit by a rattlesnake. And so then our world kind of got toppled all over again. He was clinically brain dead for about 30 minutes. And uh, he had to learn how to read, write, and talk, and walk, and all that kind of stuff. And so my grandparents' focus were, you know, on him. And he was kind of like a, having another child in the house, you know. And, and so I started dabbling in smoking weed and doing all these different kinds of things. And um, I graduated three months pregnant. And uh, obviously I didn't leave the island and go off to school and stuff. Um, and then I ended up marrying that man that I had uh, the baby with, but I didn't know anything about how to, you know, besides what my mom showed me of how to love and how to be a wife or a mother, which wasn't a very good example. Uh, well, there was a big uh, turn of events. My friend overdosed and died at my house. You know, I was angry and I was angry why God why she got to, you know, go, and I was got left because obviously I, there was a whole slew of issues and problems that came with that, and I lost my kids, and so I went homeless um, into the streets of Long Beach for about three years, uh, and then I went to jail because I got um, charges pressed against me for her death, uh, administration of a drug. And so I went to jail and I served about eight months in the county jail. When I got sober, it just, everything was spiritual, spiritual, get connected with God, you know? And I was like, well, I guess, you know, like at that point I had gotten so low out on the streets, you know, that I really wanted to die. And I was asking God to, to kill me. Instead, he <laughs> got me sober, you know? And, and uh, he had other plans for my life. I, I just, you know, I didn't know what that relationship was. And so once I started growing it and I saw these little connections, I just was like, oh, this, you know, this is the peace that I've always been looking for. He didn't give me back my life. He gave me a whole new life. I have a home and I have, I have women friends, you know, um, like they say, you know, you're going to have a life beyond your wildest dreams. Well, I could never have even have dreamed this. I mean, the things that I'm doing today, the life I live today, I mean, I've had my felonies expunged. I'm a federal employee now. Like, that's not something that I would have ever have thought would have happened, you know? Um, we own a home. Like, I went for, and this has only been, I have my sixth year sobriety birthday on June 17th. So, it's been such a short amount of time, but the thing I notice most is that in my sobriety is that when I'm not seeking God and seeking to submit to His will, things start going awry. But when I am seeking His will, not that my problems go away, but, but everything starts lining up. And it's like, oh, that's why I was going through that trial because this blessing is down the way, you know, or, oh, I had to help that person. So this had to happen, you know, and, and he shows up in such crazy ways that like my God is crazy. Like he, he puts the, he orchestrates things so crazily that I just, I can't even fathom it sometimes when I look back from where I came from to today. Thank you.